Hello, my name is Mecca, and today I'm going to be walking you guys through a simple retaining wall design using SkySiv Retaining Wall. I'm going to be using this um, example tutorial page we have that kind of breaks down the process in depth and, you know, just really run through and show you guys how to do this um, quickly. So first of all, I'm going to go to the dashboard here, scroll down to SkySiv Retaining Wall and open this up. So now that I have this open, um, you guys can just kind of get a general understanding of how this is laid out. So the main thing to understand, and it's kind of similar to other programs, most of the uh, numbers and uh, data and information we're going to be updating is going to be located here on this control panel. So as we can see from the program, we can update you know, the stem part of the wall and the footing. Um, we can update the different materials, the different soils conditions, and then also the various different loads. So we'll just kind of start off right away with the stem wall. And first thing I'm going to do is actually go to settings here, change this from metric to imperial, hit OK. And so for a lot of these values, um, I'll just kind of show you what each of them is for the stem, well op stem wall offset. If we shift this to, let's just say, 5. You can see that that's just the offset of this kind of front toe part from the actual wall itself. For the bottom width, let's change this from 1.3. So you can see that that's just this bottom width of the stem wall right here. Now, if we wanted to update the actual height of the stem wall, that would be this part right here. And let's just say 15 for an school number. So you can see how you can you know, increase and lower that. And technically this um, soil can't be higher than the actual stem wall. So let me actually raise this to 30. So if I leave that, we'll get an error later on. Okay, and then you can update the top front inset, you know, back inset. Um, oftentimes, you should not really, really modify these, but I'll just kind of show you what they do. So that's the inset there. If we were doing the top front inset, that would be, you know, coming from there. So let's actually drop this down to 25. I'm going to lower this to 0.5. This back to 0. And then for unit weight, uh, for the stem kip feet, let's just go with 0.15 for a nice whole number. Okay. And going back, if we want to update now the base of the actual stem wall. So as we can see here, we're going to have like the thickness of the actual base. We'll also have the width of the base. And again, we'll have the unit weight. Um, it's just like the unit weight of the concrete. And so let's just put this 0.15 for now. Um, so if we wanted the width to be, say, 14 instead of 17.4 where it's at now, and we can see how we decrease that width there. And the base thickness, if we want this to be, say, 4, now we've kind of increased that width there. And we can go back, and then the key height, it's increasing how tall this might be, we can say, okay, I want this to be say five, but I'm actually going to bring this back to zero. But yeah, this is just kind of update the key, but oftentimes I don't want to update that. But yeah, this is just if you wanted to just see if you had one to have like a key here, but I'm going to set these down to zero. I typically don't feature those in my design. And so now that we're done with that, the next stage is listing out what the materials are. <laughs> so there's going to be kind of two things to keep in mind here. The first is that you're going to need to define the material at each of the three different layers or soil zones. And all of the soil zones that are defined are the passive soil zone, substructure zone, and active soil zone. Um, if you go to the documentation, we lay out a lot more information on how to actually design this and you know what each zone is and how it can impact a retaining wall. And then more importantly, you know, only certain soils can be available for certain zones. Like I know the substructure zone, for instance, can only be or can only be made of certain soils. And that's just um, in typical design engineering considerations. So this goes more, we go more into detail in our documentation. But just for now, I'm going to show you guys how to update the material. So right now we currently have three different materials um, already laid out for the zones. I'll just create a new one so you can see how to do that. So this four will be new soil. I'll just say, um, we'll call this one gravel, just for to say, that color. 
So you can update the friction angle of the actual soil and the unit weight. This you'll get from just the geotechnical report or properties of the soil that you're given. Um, and you can also update, you know, the concrete soil friction or allowable bearing pressure, et cetera. But once we've had, let's say we've decide, defined all our different soil capacity, our soil values, you know, we can update these for the loam, medium clay, and sand, or whatever else the soil conditions you're going to have. We will go to the actual layers. And so, as we mentioned before, you're going to have the active soil zone, the passive soil zone, and the substructure zone. So going back to here in the active zone, currently they're using soil type one, which is that medium clay. Say I wanted to shift that to the gravel. You can see how this has been updated to gravel. And you know you can do the same with the passive as well as the substructure zone. The one thing you can do for the passive as well as the active zone is say for the passive zone, I wanted to have an additional layer. And this one was going to be you know, let's just call it sand, or let's just say this sand, um, or what we'll do is this. We'll go back to materials. Say I knew, okay, I want to have another sand layer, but this one's unit weight is going to be 20. So we have the first sand layer, 15. So now we have two different sand layers with two different unit widths. When we come back to the layers, for the passive zone, layer one is that first sand. We'll say this is 4.5 feet. And then that second layer will be the second sand. And we'll put this at 6.5 feet. So you can begin to play around and, you know, if you have different layers at different um, areas, you can update that for the passive and active zone. And then obviously your substructure zone will just be whatever is going to be at the bottom or base of your footing. But once you've updated all those values, then you can actually move on to here and start adding the loads. And so for, in this situation right now, we're just showing a uniform load. But what I will actually do, show you the different kinds of loads. So if you've had a uniform load, that's like, as you would think, it's just kind of like a unit load along the length of the um, active zone. And it's just, you know, push, pushing the load that the retaining wall is trying to hold up. That's the main purpose of the retaining wall design. But say I wanted to add a second load, and this one, we'll name it a patch load. And I will actually increase the magnitude to maybe five, so you can see the difference. We'll go from two to three. So you can see how this one here, you have the uniform load. This one for the patch load is only located at, um, on a specific, you know, length along the, along the soil. And the last kind of load that we have is a line load. And I will make this, yeah negative eight so we can see we'll locate this one at let's say 4.5 so so now you can kind of see the difference you have that uniform load here you have the patch load here and then that kind of linear load is here you can think of it just almost as a point load at a specific location but once you've defined your loads you've kind of come to the final part where you can analyze and print the report so for here, we'll just put the design checks on. We'll use ACI 19 uh, for concrete. We'll hit analyze. And then we get our results. So right now it's telling us, okay, when it comes to overturning and sliding, we're fine. But when it comes to bearing capacity, we're not meeting um, what we're not, we're not meeting the recommended factor of safety. And so you can always go back here, which is, you know, return to model. And we can update these as necessary. You say you wanted to decrease the loads or you wanted to decrease the height or increase the height or increase the actual um, length of the toe, et cetera. You can modify the footing until you arrive at a result that you are, you're, you want. And then the final step in the process, is once you're all done, you can always hit preview report. And once this loads, you're able to download the report to PDF. But yep, this is the basic way to go about, you know, your retaining wall design and using SkySib retaining wall and just a quick example that you guys can use in your day to day. All right. Thank you.